at night, I can sometimes hear, hear and feel the force of the sea and it is a constant reminder to me that nothing is stable, nothing is safe. Whole buildings gone missing, roads have gone missing, the actual sea defences themselves have gone broken to bits. We are the next sort of lot of houses next to the cliff now, really, so it's it's gonna be gone and that's the reality of it. It's not it's not gonna be saved. I came to live in Haysborough in 2010. It was a marvellous place to move to. Bungalow by the edge of the sea, absolutely idyllic. I lived there very happily till 2013. The property was getting closer and closer to the edge of the cliff. I kept writing to the district council saying, I've got to move it before it gets too close to the edge. And they said, well, you've got to have planning permission to move it. I had no money at the time to get planning permission, so I couldn't do anything about it. And it was on the 5th of December, 2013, that my life changed totally and utterly. We had a high tide and we had a wind from the north which drove it in even further and we lost huge amounts of cliff here all night. The sea was roaring and the waves were so high. The following morning I looked across at the bungalow and I thought, it's all right, it's still there. But when I walked over to have a look, I saw to my horror that a third of the bungalow was in mid-air. The sea had just taken the cliff away from underneath it and it was hanging there. To tell you the truth, at that time I was shell-shocked, somehow numbed to the point I couldn't make a decision about anything for six months. The day Bryony lost her house, that was a very sad day. Um, and it's the reality of that actually, you know, things aren't stopping, it's not slowing up here. It's the thought of what do I do next? I've got my little family and um, it's a frightening prospect really. Where we're standing at the moment is all that is left of my field. It used to be a big rectangle there and out there were the big Edwardian terraces, all four of them. I watched every single day as they were taken down. This huge machine with jaws crunching the roof of this building. It was, it was heartbreaking. All of us in Beach Road were offered compensation for our houses. The, the council offered to buy them. I refused to take money from the Pathfinder scheme. We're not supposed to call it compensation, but everybody does. Because at that time the sea defences were there, I thought I was going to be okay for another 25 years. I was hoping that they might actually look at trying to save it, look at more ways of sort of getting the sea defences a bit stronger um, and because we're losing a community here, we're an amazing community of people. It is very difficult to try and get across to people that some of what you're asking for just isn't possible. It just can't work. A solid concrete sea wall might protect a few metres here but it might also damage somewhere else further down drift. There is a degree of security and comfort in that when it, if and when it does reach you, the sea, you won't lose everything because the Pathfinder project is there to pick up the pieces.
It's not what we want, it's not defences, but it is absolutely the second best. There are 18 listed buildings in Haysborough. One of them, which is a Grade 1 listed building, is the church. There are no plans at the moment to save or move the church. There are no plans at the moment to save or move the lighthouse. I would desperately want them to be saved. Whether they will or not is a different matter. I bought a house which is in more or less the same position I've lived in for a long time now up here, which is right on the edge of the village. I wish to continue to talk about saving our coastline, not letting it go, and I can do that much better here. It's going to be a toss-up whether the house goes before I die.